Hey everyone, in today's video, I want to show you how to upload and process CSV files in a Flask app, and also how to download some files from a Flask app, some CSV files. So this is something that a lot of people have come to me for help with, just how to handle CSV files, like how to go through the upload process, so I thought I'd make a video. And if you need any one-on-one -on -one help with this yourself, I have a coaching program. Just go to prettyprinted.com slash coaching or the link in the description below where you can learn more on how you can talk to me and I can help you with your app. So let's get into this one. The first thing I want to show you is this script that I have. So this script is like some kind of process that you would have to take in a CSV file and do something. In my particular case, all it's doing is summing up some product types. So here I have a product and price and for some of these products, they have types. So for example, here we have a pepper and it's a chili powder pepper. Right. And then we have garlic here. So the point of this script here is just to remove everything before the hyphen and call it the product type. If there's no hyphen, then the product itself is the product type. And then it sums up all the prices and then it returns a new PDF that has basically the product types and then the sum of all the prices. So the way this works is I can go into interactive mode with my script. And then I can call process CSV with product data dot CSV. So product data dot CSV, run it. And then it's going to create a new output file that appends the timestamp. I'll open it up and then this is what the file looks like. So this is just an example process. This is not like anything crazy, probably a better way of doing this, but this is my example. So what I wanna do is I want to build a Flask app around this. So right now it's just a script. So what I'll do is I'll create a new app.py file and I'll open that up. And in here, I'll do the typical Flask import. So from Flask, import Flask. And then what I'll do is I'll create a create app function. And because my example is so short, I'll keep everything in the create app function. But if your app are larger, you might want to organize things into multiple files. So inside of create app, I'll instantiate the Flask object using dunder name. And then I will return this object, return app. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is I want to create an upload form so I can allow the user to upload a CSV file that needs to be processed. So to do this, I'll create a routes and we'll just call this upload, a simple name. And this will have both get and post requests. And I'll just call this upload as a function. And notice I'm putting this inside of the create app. So it works the same if it were outside, but just to keep everything in one file, I'm putting it inside of this function create app here. So when it comes to routes like this, where there's both get and post, you have to check the uh, method first. So let me import a request from Flask. Now I'll also import render template because I'll need that in a moment. So for the route, the first thing I'll do is request method is posts, right? So for the post method, I'll do one thing. And then for the get method, I'll just put this outside of the if block and I'll return a render template. And I want to return uh, a template called upload.html, which I'll create in a moment. And then in the post request, I'll actually take the file and then you know pass this to the process so it can run. And in here, I'm going to return a redirect. So return, redirect, and then URL four. So I need to import those at the top and then return redirect uh, URL four. And what I'll do is I'll return to a download page that I don't have yet, but I'll, I'll return there once I have that working. So what I wanna do now is I want to create an upload.html file. So what I'll do is I'll create a templates directory and I'll create a file in that templates directory called upload.html. Let's go ahead and open that. And I'll keep this very simple. So I won't put uh, much of the HTML. I'll just put the form itself. And on the form, I need to specify the action. So the action is going to be upload. I'll just make it explicit. You know, you can leave action as blank and it will just automatically post all the forms to the same endpoint. You can put upload like this, which what I'll do, or you can use URL for. The method is going to be post. And then finally, when you have a form where you can upload files, you have to put uh, an encoding type. So encoding type is equal to a multi-part slash form data, just like that. So a common issue is you can't get the file data 
when you upload it and it's probably because you're missing this here. So now what I want to do is I just want to create the field for a file. So what I'll do is I'll have a label and I'll say this label is for file and we'll say file and then we'll say file here. And then we have the input type file. ID is going to be file and name is going to be file. And then let's just put a line break here and then we'll put the submit button. So submit or how about upload just to keep their names consistent. So we have the upload here. And then when they click on this button, it will upload the form. So let me go ahead and start the Flask app, make sure that's working. And let me just put it into development mode. So the server restarts and we see better errors. And I'll go over to the browser and run this. Okay, so we see it's not found because it's looking at the index. So I have to go to slash upload. And now we see our form here. So let's go back to the code and I need to go to app.py. And what I want to do is open up app.py and I want to write the code to handle uh, processing the file. So first I need to get the file and then I need to um, send it to my process that I have. So first I'm going to bring in some code from the Flask documentation. So I'm just gonna copy it over. It just makes it easier to handle files like this. And I can just put this, I can just put this at the top. So outside of create app is fine. And all this is doing is it's saying that the only types of files that are going to be allowed for this particular thing are CSV files. So I have a set here. I could have defined it with the curly brackets, but I just have a list and then converting it to a set. And here this function allow file will just make sure that the file that's uploaded, the file name contains .csv at the end. And then also I want to import a utility from WorkSerg. And I just noticed that my URL for disappeared up there. So I want to import from WorkSerg, which is the library that Flask is built on top of. And it has this function called secure file name. So from WorkSerg utils, I want to import the function secure file name. And then next, what I can do is inside of this if block for posts, I want to get the file. So to get the file, I use request.files, so not request.form. And I can just put this into a variable. Let's just call it file. I know that is kind of like a special word, but in this case, it's going to work. So file is going to be request.files file. So this gives me the actual uh, file object that I can use. And I can check to see if this exists. So if file, and I can also see if it is allowed. So allowed file and I can pass the file name. So file dot file name will give me the name of the file. And then I want to convert the file name to a secure file name. So a secure file name, like what it does is imagine someone has a file called um, my CSV or let's say like um, home my CS or my data dot CSV. Right. So you see how there's a slash like this is not a good format for a file name. So what secure file name would do is it just removes the slashes. So if you were to use this somewhere, you wouldn't accidentally uh, end up touching something on your system. Like you're just dealing with the file itself, not any path. So a secure file name will remove that. So what I can do is I can say file name is equal to secure file name and then file dot file name. So for our demo, it's going to return the same file name, but if there were slashes in there, it would remove the slashes. And then next what I want to do, once I have this file name, this new file name, I want to create like a new file name based off this that has the date. Right, so I need to import date time. So we can go up here, let's just put it here. So from date time, import date time. And what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to basically put all the files that were uploaded into their own directory. So I'll create a directory called input here. And it's just going to save all the files that get uploaded to the system. So I can create a variable called like new file name. And then uh, what I want to do is I want to convert this old file name to a new file name. So the first thing I need to do is take the old one. So the old one is file name and I want to split it on the dots. So I want everything before the dot. So I'll do um, square bracket zero. So that gives me everything before the dot when I split it. Then I want to add an underscore and then I want to add the date time. I could make this an F string. Let me make this an F string. So this will be F. And then this part goes inside. 
right? And then this is going to be followed by an underscore. So the, the name of the file, underscore. And then I want the, the date time. So I'll convert the date time to a string. So all I need is date time and then dot CSV at the end, right? So it's gonna take the original file name before the CSV part, have an, add an underscore, put the, put a timestamp and then dot CSV. And then finally, I want to save this. So to save, I can take the original file object, so file, and then call dot save on it. And then I need to specify where I'm going to save this file. So I'm going to do OS. So let me import OS, import OS. So OS is just my operating system library. So with OS, I can do things like os.path join. And then I want to join the input directory with this new file name. So it's going to save them to the new input directory with the new file name. File.save is taking the, the actual contents of the file and it's changing the name here by saving it to this particular location. Okay, so that saves the input. So let's try this. Let's try to return, just uh, upload it and we'll see what happens. So right now my input directory is empty. If I go over here and I see I have an error with my F string. So let me just go and fix that really quick. We see there's an unmatched paren, and it's because of the types of quotes that I use here. This should be double quotes instead of single quotes because I use single quotes on the outside. So let's go ahead and try that again. And now it works, so I'll just pick a file. So product data, same file. I'll hit upload, it tells me upload it. I'll go back to VS Code. And now we see in my input, I have a new file called product data. So if all you needed to do was save files as they're uploaded, like this is a way you can do it. In my case, what I want to do is I want to process the file. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to import the function from my script. So let's just open that. So this is just a function process CSV. I'll go over to app and I'll import it. So from scripts, import process CSV. And then what I want to do is I want to pass the uh, new location to the process. So let me make this a variable. Let's say save location. And then we'll copy this and move it here or cut it. And then we'll put it inside of file.save here. So this is where it's going to be saved. And then what I want to do is with that process file, I'll pass the save location to it. And I'll create a variable called output file. So this is uh, the name of the file and the location where it's saved. And one thing I can do is I can allow the user to immediately download this file. I can say return and then send from directory. And the directory I want to send from is output. And the file that I want to send is the output file, right? And then if I go up here, I can import send from directory. So let's take a look at what that looks like. I'll upload the file again, hit upload. And now we see it immediately downloads the file. So it processes the file and it returns like the, the updated product types file to me. So I can see like the sums of all the prices across the product types. So if this were a long process, you probably wouldn't want the user to download immediately. So what we'll do is we'll redirect to this download endpoint instead and I can remove this uploaded and I can just go ahead and create this. So I'll create a new route. So I need to make sure it's still inside of the create app function. So app route and then download. And what I'm gonna have for download is like a list of all the files. So what I can do here is I can say render template and I should return render template. So return render template and then I want to return a file called download.html, which I'll create in a moment. And I'm going to return like a list of all the files that I have in the directory. So files, uh, OS, list, directory, and then output. And I'll go ahead and create a new template called download.html. And in here, all I'm going to do is loop over those files. So for file name in files, in four, what I want to do is I want to create a link to the file name. So I'll leave that part blank because I need a place for the link to go to, which I don't have just yet. And I'll put 
the file name here. So let's see what this looks like. If I go to download, we see here, I just have one uh, product type because I've only done the process once. If I do this again and upload, now I have two, right? And they're on the same line. So I'll put a line break just as a way to visually separate them. And we see I have both files here. So the goal is I want to click on one of these and it downloads the file for me. So to do this, I can create one more route, which will be called, well, the endpoint will start with download as well, but it's going to have a file name here. So file name, and then we'll call this download file. And then it's going to take in the file name as a parameter. And all I want to do is just call that send from directory again. So send from directory. Uh, the directory is output, and then the file name is going to be the file name, just like that. And then inside of here, I just need to add in the href the URL for. So URL for download file. And then the second argument is the file name. So file name equals file name here. Close that out and then put the curly brackets again. And now I can go here, click on one of the files and it downloads to my system and I can download either one. So we see I can download both files. So that's basically it. That's all I wanted to show you for this video. Um, I know it's an example, like typically your process wouldn't be that simple and then probably wouldn't want to just have a screen where people can download files from the file system. Instead, you might put them in a database and then inside of the database, you'd have a reference to the location of the CSV file. It could be on your file system or it could be on a service like S3. So that's what I want to show you. If you have any questions about anything that I've done here, feel free to ask. I'm gonna put the code in the description below so you can uh, go see the code if you wanna take anything here and use it for your purposes. So that's it for this video. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please subscribe. So thank you for watching and I will talk to you next time.